Um, well, I'm an artist from Newcastle, but I'm, uh, I studied in London for a couple of years and then ended up moving back here after seven years of living there. And I'll probably jump straight into doing a screen share as well, if that's okay. okay. Let me make you host. Right, you should be able to the screen share. Thank you. Is everyone seeing that fine? Um, I, I generally make like quite, they're generally made out of uh, work materials, like kind of plasterboard, wood, um, found objects. Well, not kind of found objects, more like kind of workman waste materials, like materials that you'll kind of throw, throw away from, a builder will throw away. Um, but I try to make them quite sculptural, as well as like just being flat drawn. Um, and I'm only going to go rush through these ones to start with and give you the basic ideas. Has anyone heard of syphysis? Um, well, the myth of syphysis is, um, it's also a Camus book, but it was also about syphysis pushed a boulder up a hill. And, um, and then he gets to the bottom of the hill and it rolls back down. But I found it really funny to do it as mice. And as soon as he rolls up, it comes back down. But then I also tied it in with Atlas, because Atlas is sold up the globe. And, um, I don't really take myself as being a very serious artist, but I deal with quite serious content. Like I deal with like quite heavy philosophical and also quite like um, ingrained mythological stories and other stuff like that. Um, that's what that one is. Uh, the, pin, the picture that you can see behind is a very old one. And, and like similar to yourself, John, um, I started out by being a writer and I wrote a story about a guy who... Um, who fell in love with a prostitute, but then he was confined by um, physics, so he couldn't travel far enough to ever be in the reality where she would be the one that he was with, but also tied it in with Tai and Zhu's philosophy about humanism and um, things about the throwaway. Um, <clears throat> there's a book by um, John Gray called Straw jo Dogs, and... Um, Basically, one of the big things I took about that was, was the title, Straw Dogs, and Straw Dogs are something that we kind of throw away. Um, we put them on a plinth, and I kind of always thought that was something similar to art, that we put art up there, and the artist, we put it up there on a plinth and a pedestal while it's showing, and then as soon as it's done, it's something throw away. And I, I also, I just thought that was a really good metaphor for my work in general, that um, no matter how much you put yourself up, like, um, you kind of ethereal and I've, I've got that kind of tie in with art generally in my whole practice is that um, art today is quite immediate but quite far away but I kind of like that old that old grain of art where it's like kind of uh, really had a, a reverence and kind of um, meant something more um, and I know a lot of that's to do with photography and other stuff and like art hasn't got its relevance so much today um, and that was part of a show. And then move on to this one. This is Ophelia. You know Ophelia from Shakespeare? And this, um, it's a classic painting. And a lot of the time I like to do quite parodies with like old Renaissance or like, well, this is pre-Raphaelite, like paintings and drawings. So I kind of do them in my modern my modern take and style, which is also about like exploring space and like how, how artwork engage with, engages with its viewer. Um, and that's why it's got that physical ele element rather than being something flat on a wall or being something flat, like, or being on the canvas and being contained. I quite like it to have that physical element and that's why it's laying out on the floor with the, the plasterboard cut out the way it is and that the hands, you might be able to see a little bit like the fingers are actually pointing up and that's actually got all the fingers, they individually like facing up like that, drawn individually on it. And that's all to do with how a viewer might engage work and how we might actually, um, how they might absorb work. And like, um, I, I kind of quite often talk about like talking through the subconscious and talking through, because um, artwork is a language that's just, get straight into that bit, like artwork is a language and um, 
like a language, we, we, it, it, it's not like a, li a word. A word is very literal. So as soon as you say a word, it's, it, it gives a definition to something. Artwork doesn't have that. Artwork doesn't have that boundary. When you talk about like artwork, it's like, it's ambiguous, but I really enjoy that. And I think that's um, a very good thing about its language. And it's just more from that same show. And I did the show, this was just before lockdown. And I think it was similar. I watched one of your other feeds and somebody else had a show. And then um, the show was kind of hindered by lockdown. So it stayed in the space for about six, seven months. Well, whatever, however long we've been in lockdown. And not that many people have got to see it, but this is Narcissist. And yes, I, I used my own image. But Narcissist was looking at his own reflection in the water. And he kind of fell into his own his own gaze. And I quite use Narcissist quite a lot to do with um, <clears throat> ideas of, of the artist. Uh, the artist is very much talking about their own feelings and opinions and falling into their own gaze and unaware. Um, this show was parried and, and there was Ophelia in the same one, but across the other side of the room, there was Echo. And I always quite like putting Echo and Narcissist together because Echo is in the same story, but Echo always seemed to me is like, if you're looking in this personal struggle thing, Echo was just as tortured as Narcissist was because um, she was confined to being in love with him to the point that the only word she could she could like speak was I love you and he was too busy looking at himself so I always quite enjoy playing on that and especially with like being an artist and I quite like taking my taking the, the mickey out of myself as being an artist and being like all of us artists do think we've got this right to put our opinions out into the world and it's quite funny and it's quite I, I think it's quite a humane approach to be like yeah and I quite use them quite a lot about and that was just more and that was the back side of the work and on the back side of the work I, I can't remember exactly what I quoted on it but it was um it's probably language theory a lot of it a lot of what I talk about generally when I do these talks and you can tell I'm not very comfortable in talking on, on zoom but um it's about deconstructionism and deconstructionism is isn't about deconstructing, isn't about taking stuff apart or destroying anything. It's about taking about all the components. And it's generally a term that's used with semiotics and talking about language. So you'll take apart every single component and then you look at them individually, but you can't do that unless you take apart. And it's very much talked about like with language, like to understand the word love, you have to understand every single word that's come before love. So I very much talk about that with my work and that is, me with my own nature with dyslexia, I have this kind of weird nature and I've, I've read like quite a lot about it. Like I do have a tendency to, to string bits of knowledge from different parts and pull them together quite quickly. Whereas like, it's a, it's a trait that's quite similar with people. With, um, well, I don't know, but well, because you don't think like the majority of people, but quite a lot of artistic and artistic people like all all have dyslexia and stuff. So you tie down different knowledges and pull them together. And that's kind of one of my loose concepts, not entirely, um, but I've got to be honest, a lot of my concepts in my work is just about making work and um, playing. And I play a lot with mythology, philosophy and science. Um, and I never take too much of a big standpoint on any of it. Um, I kind of sit on the fence because I'd, I'd realised as an artist, and, and I, I probably wouldn't have even said this a year ago if anyone watch, watched the talks I did in front of my work, but even a year ago, I probably wouldn't say that because I wasn't open enough to say, like, I'm, us as artists, we aren't experts. We're just, like, playing. We play with these ideas, and we don't fully understand them. <clears throat> and, yes, I've done a fair bit of reading, but I'm, I'm not a philosophy major. I, like, I, 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 I'm, not a, a, I'm not a professor or anything like that. Um, I am playing with these ideas and I, that's very much why I sit in the fence rather than giving you this big overall this is about what it is about um, and I think that really comes through my nature and one of my main things is humour I think work should be funny and I, I, I guess you'd have to be in front of the work to actually get why I find it funny um, and maybe it is only me who finds funny but this is quite a good one because you can see the, the 3D elements of my work when you look around it, like that, that picture's just on the floor. 
Um, one of the early things I, I was talking about positioning, I used to always, um, back at Goldsmiths, I was always put work at a lean and then posing on people because they, they, they would give that religious aspect, aspect of like when you look at a picture, you're always bowing down to the cross when you go to church. Um, but then this is more like on the floor, on the, but you're, you're, you're more engaging with it rather than it being imposing upon you. Um, and then we get into these ones. These are probably more the ones that, um, to do with what I sent to you, uh, what I sent off for, for my proposal. And I can talk through the characters, the characters in this. It, it was a long time ago I drew this. So um, it's Pan and it's Cupid and Psyche. And I also put Venus in there. And I did these for a series of four, uh, four drones for a show I did two years ago. And they're pretty big. Um, I think you're talking about like seven foot by four. Big things on a wall, quite imposing. And there was only three of them I did because I quite like the idea of um, triptychs. Um, in art, and that's about doing a series of free pit pictures. That, and they generally, the triptychs kind of fold into each other, but obviously I didn't do that. I just quite like playing with the idea of triptychs. Um, but, and I'm more fancied, and I have done this for years, of putting like these kind of mythological beings and then like making them quarrel with themselves about like quite like modern day uh, philosophy and things that we think about how far back for quite a few minutes and somebody was asking us a question but she seems to be gone now um, about Medusa but her feed wasn't going that well um, but I think what she was trying to say is Medusa is a character from um, mythology and she was she was she was saying she was raped um, and I don't think it's that black and white in Greek mythology because Greek mythology is quite quite um, it's part of its time but yeah, she was she was a, a tortured figure, and I've done one of her quite a long time ago. But um, that isn't one of the ones I was showing. But she was asking about that. Oh, she's uh, asking. Yeah, she'll be here in a minute, so hopefully be able to clarify. <laughs> Hello, I'm, I, I'm yeah. sorry about that. It just kicked me out completely. Apologies. Um, you you asking a question? Stuart was saying you were asking a question about Medusa. Oh, I'm, am I on now? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, you're back in the room. Was it me? I just sorry. I've just sort. Of, I think I just connected back onto it. Um, Zoom just kicked me out completely. So I think it kicked me oh. out. And oh no! I at least put back in. I thought it's going to finish. <laughs> But um, I think you were asking a question before it booted you out about. Medusa. No, I was just saying how good that that his work was, and that we were just talking about Medusa's truth and my portrayal of Medusa, um, and the fact that she was demonized, and a lot of women are demonized for like, you know, like slut shaming like, and things like that. Can I just stop you there? Because in Africa, Medusa is seen as being yeah. strong fertility fertility god, so she's not. She's in this modern idea of Greek mythology. She is demonized, but it's it's quite good that you pointed that out because she's not, she's not in the African culture. In African yeah. culture, she's celebrated. She's actually a goddess of fertility, <clears throat> and even in Greek mythology as well, she was like quite like we we take these mythological creatures, and that's why I think I put like existential cause with them because we take these creatures on this very kind of modern understanding of them. But that's exactly what the Greeks did. These characters were away for years, and we only have uh, Homer and a couple of other people who were talking about them, and it's their understanding, it's their translation, same with the Bible or any other religious book. Um, but yeah, I did quite like that. Maybe it's just like Christianity's version of it, or you know, Christianity in, in Western culture. And being scared of strong female characters that have power. <laughs> I think that or was, demonized women with the power. <laughs> yeah. Um, all of our understanding about Greek mythology is like of in today's kind of cliche, uh, cliche, cliche. And also, a lot of it was demonized, like whether or not you want to fall into that category of believing that the whole of. Because like, we, we forget the Old Testament talks about Gaia, and John talked about Gaia earlier. Um, and the Old talk, Testament talked about Cronus, the, the, the goddess of time. Um, they're all parts of modern day religion. We just don't really know about it um, that much. I'm fascinated by it, so I've, I've read into it. But um, yeah. I think, I think Stuart, um, sorry, what were you going to say, Alice? 
I was just going to say, I really loved, um, I've written it down because I'm going to write it up in the notes. Um, as as artists, um, us as artists aren't experts. We're just playing. I loved that. I think it's, it's perfect. <laughs> it is. I think we're our experts <laughs> are being a bit crazy though. <laughs> like, like, like all the way through university and, and all the rest of it like you go to the, and you talk about like you talk about these big heavy heavy subjects like you're in a poetry yeah. like, and a lot of the time you've read one book and I, I'm not talking about like I'm, I'm personally I've, I've read into my, my background and stuff but I've, I haven't studied any of these things I've, I've got an interest in them um, and the same and, and one of the main ones I've, I've, I've mentioned that for is like language theory because um, I'm not not an expert. I've just read around this, read around the, the edges and psychology as well. Just read around the edges rather than that. But yeah. And but another... I think it's true. What you sorry, what you're saying is really true about like art being your own visual art language. It is an art language that you create, and like it can take forever to build up a portfolio. Like I was looking at Keith Haring's work. And he'd built up his like little bits of languages that in imagery to make his whole like imagery and things. Yeah. Yeah. The the way I like to think about it is more than it being a language for me, it's kind of become me exploring the world. Like right. as if I was an alien sent to the planet Earth and this <laughs> is my findings. And this is like me making some kind of sense to it and like splitting it all out. Yeah. Like, so you you're using these um, c characters and myths from the past, taking them out of their context, putting them in 2020. Probably not 2020, to, probably like the last 50, 60 years, but yeah, yeah. yeah. To put, put across some ideas that you have? Is, no. that, is that what no, you... No, I'm, no, no. I'm not no. quite getting the thread of what it is that you're... <laughs> No, it's not my ideas. It's the ideas about the thinking of people today and about how we communicate and how we talk to each other rather than it being my ideas. And these ideas have been going on for like, like I said, there, there is, although I've said I'm not a professor or an expert in any of these things, but there is a Dono there. And like I said about the deconstructionism ideas, that that was like 50, 60 years worth of writing in that. Wittgenstein, which is semionics which is all about the ideas of literacy and how we talk and like how words are digested into our minds. Like the ideas of deconstruction isn't small, it's, it's massive. The idea of deconstruction, to understand a cup, you have to understand everything. You have to understand China, you have to understand drinking, you have to understand everything to do with that. It's not a small and like, and I will become very humility, I, I will try to humble myself down, but it's, it is a large subject that I deal with, it is like a large subject matter. Um, but I do sit on the fence because I know I'm not a, I know I'm not an expert, but this is what fascinates me. And that's why I, I refer to that idea of being an alien that comes down and is trying to understand it. But that's also because of my interest in the world, like my interest in being a human. We're only here for a temporal amount of time. Whether or not we go to a God, we go to a heaven or anything else, we're only here for a certain amount of time. And we're, we're basically humans are very interesting because we're trying to understand the world. And as much as an, a, um, a dolphin or an octopus are just probably just as clever as us, as us in their own kind of way, and an ant and societies are all clever in their own kind of way, none of them are trying to, to, t to pick apart the world. So artwork for me is picking apart the world. And language is picking up on the world and understand the world and describing it. But the written word is about telling you what something is, whereas artwork is about trying to actually explain it and not pigeonhole it, if that makes any sense. I know that's massive, but that's what I'm saying. It's a massive subject. Mm. It's like to it language. makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. yeah, it's trying to use verbal language to articulate something that's visual. It's always, I mean, it's fascinating. I love that kind of like, you know, the tension between the two. Um, but I think with the deconstructionism, it's kind of exponential, isn't it? It's like going down the rabbit hole. It's like following footnotes in, in theory, if you do theory. It's well, like, yeah, oh, Donald did his head. I'll follow yeah. that interesting thread. And then you go, yeah. oh, that's interesting. I'll follow that yeah. interesting thread. It's like there's no kind of limit to that kind mm. of, you know, finding out something else interesting off the back of what you just found out. That's the way yeah. I see it anyway. 
That's I do that a lot, idea. but I don't remember what I find when I get there. <laughs> so that's why it. I make it visual. <laughs> I think that's like when you start watching something on YouTube and then you'll watch one thing on yeah. one subject and you'll just, you'll just lead on to something totally random, totally yeah. irrelevant to what you started with. Yeah, and then three hours later you're like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> where, did, where did it start? <laughs> that is my artwork. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, right. <laughs> yeah, and that's, yeah, that's... Mm. But I'd say that I could recognise the themes that are running through it. I don't see it as, as sporadic. I, it just makes sense to me. Because my, my work is more like around the Bible and, you know, wolves in, le in lamb's clothing, things like that. And I have a lot of, like, different, like, psychology and philosophy. I have these ideas and I, I get an understanding of where you come from. It's just a completely different way that you're... Obviously, everyone's different, but it's really interesting. I, I think it's really good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. But yeah, they're in there. And like, the way I put it out there is because I can't be, I can't be an authority figure. Um, another weird one with art is like being an artist and doing a couple of shows, you realise that you, you don't own your own artwork as soon as you give it away to the public. So you can just mm -hmm. open it up and I can give you the threads which you've gotten on to, like the psychological threads, the ideas of the mythological creatures, the, the quotes, and you can key into them but really you're giving it away to the public. You're giving it away to the people who sit in front of it and look at it and the, the, where their mind goes is, is up to them. So I think you, you've got it. I think in like um, what you've said to us is, is quite encouraging, if that makes any sense. Um. Yeah, because I think that... Yeah, uh, it's not just mental encouragement. Like when I went to uni, um, sorry, um, I did the psychology and the sociology and the philosophy with my modules. And I used to always never say I did an art degree. I did all of these things. But you're right, you do touch upon it. But I've been a lifetime hacking at them books. And it's whatever you can churn out. My decade off taught me that you're, you can read as much as you want but it's your life experiences and I'm really forward with what I do now. I'm not like, I say what it is because I think I've passed that point. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not um, a confessional artist, so I won't delve in. I've done writing before and that does tend to be a bit more confessional, but um, <laughs> that's not what's interesting or spares me behind my work. If that helps you at all. Yeah. This um, theme that you were talking about, um, the how much you rely on the viewer as um, using their own imagination and experience. Well, interpretation, yeah. To, yeah, their interpretation and how you um, you position your art on the floor and you know in more sculptural, more like an object than a two D. Yeah. Painting and things. Um, do you ever get feedback from people? Do they say how your work's affected them or what it's made them think of? Or Quite a lot. Um, I've done quite a lot of shows. Um, and generally, people are very kind when they talk to your face and then generally talk a different way behind your back. But um, generally what it goes is it, people are, are, are fairly like... Generally, when people see it, they kind of get it. They kind of get that they all kind of the thing of it, exploring the space and all of it. And a lot of the time, which I quite like, a lot of people, um, and I can only answer, answer your question as honestly as I'm putting it in front of you. Generally, people say they don't get it when they're there, and then they go home and like, they start talking about it, and then, yeah, they start to, start to get mm -hmm. why I was doing it. Um, it is a physical experience, and when I'm talking about those ideas about the subconscious and talking through unaware things, um, then that is what you have to have to accept that the immediacy if I was going to be immediate I would talk with words and language I would talk with the physical mm. word but I'm talking through art so things do need to process and you have to go away or you have to experience it and then go away but generally yes I have had pretty good pretty good feedback with it and um, generally yeah like there's even radio programs that I've listened to back about like my show and um, shows and they've been like they were even they started out themselves it's like I didn't know what to talk about but then we've just started and then it, it just got bigger 
And I like that. I like that. And I don't, like I said, I don't want to be an authority of my work. And you do have to be an authority when you do a talk, if that makes any sense. Because I'm um, starting to study white paintings and um, these paintings that um, I suppose I can't see them all that well online and it'd be nice to be able to see some in you know in reality um but reading about you know people who've written about white paintings or paintings by people like agnes martin and that um their experience of looking at it um yeah. is um you know where you have to move around and look yeah. at things from different angles and experience all the subtleties Explore. and the nuances and that it's um quite um visual yeah yeah and, that's a, like and for some people a sort of a spiritual experience um yeah. but what you're saying is your art is having um a long term it's it's like like you say not an immediate effect oh wow that's that's good isn't it it's a yeah. it's a kind of a, a an evolving process isn't it and in the mind of the the viewer and uh... yeah um a lot of the time generally especially making the big work you kind of go for the why wow factor to start with and like that's like it's just something, and that comes from the background of Goldsmith, the university I went to, is that it is about, it kind of does become about the spectacle, but that isn't the meat behind my work. That is just the gloss on the end of it. Um, the language and all the rest of it is like what, exactly what you're saying it is about the exploring it, seeing the little quotes mm -hmm. in there, um, following the lines, working out how I've done it. Because I also, a, a, a talk I did about half a year ago was about um, how I want it to look like anyone could do it. If anyone put their time into it, anyone could do this. It was just that some madman from the northeast of England has decided to do it for himself. Like, um, but yeah, thank you. I like your comment. I think it's really interesting that um, when visual artwork becomes a kind of starter for a bigger dialogue. So I'm fascinated in dialogue. It's part of my kind of whole, you know, practice. Um, and where language is missing or like inadequate to talk about some stuff which art can talk about we then yeah. almost revert back to language to yeah. Yeah. unpick it and deconstruct it and to make sense of it and make you know we've connected with the work but we want we want to connect with other people about our interpretation yeah. um so i think that when art starts a dialogue that's kind of one of the greatest things about it i think yeah. And I, I love that because that's where I started. I'm dyslexic as hell. I went to a specialist school when I was younger. Um, so it kind of just feels right. Like I always say, art is for what you can't say with words. Art is for, and, but I'm not very good with words. And I know I sound word here, but that's because I've went through university and it's been drummed into us, but I'm really not very wordy. Um, I've got a lot of <laughs> defences here. Like, and, and all the rest of them, like everyone does when they talk. Um, but yeah, like artwork is more than that. It's more about the, uh, yeah, it frees you up from all that kind of, yeah, words are literally. Yeah. Words are about um, the same Stuart, Stuart, just to add to that, I think, um, be, and uh, being an artist and a painter, for me, I found it's like, you're just there at one with the complete, like the board, and, and that's all I have. And you're just getting your inner self out, you know, the subconscious mind whirring out. And as Alice is saying, you do try to connect with the people around you. Because, you know, like, I don't know, I've just, I just, I think I've been called weird a lot. And then it's just like, okay, but then I've got a reasoning behind the madness. You yeah. know, there's something logical here. It's just not in your comprehension at this moment in time. Yeah. You know. Um, but you do have to pick at it later on. It doesn't just, you can't just be so pure and live a life like that. You've got to get your work out there. It's just the way that the world is, to you know. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I don't really know where to go on for that. 
I thought there was really interesting crossover between both your works. Um, so when I when I like program um, art lab, I don't make a you know carefully curated selection. I just love the serendipity of who comes together. Um, and I thought, and I really like analysing the the kind of like serendipitous crossovers. And I think th dealing with the kind of the mythology and the futuristic imagery and stuff. Obviously, you've got very varied different works coming from completely different places. But I saw that there was quite um, a crossover there. I don't know if anybody else. Has I saw the. I was thinking that. that. I thought you'd done it on purpose, Alice. I thought <laughs> no. you did it on purpose as well. No, this is this is this is the beauty of kind of you know. You, you, you sort of see somebody's work and some images and then a, a written proposal or statement online. Um, and yeah, you can kind of see stuff, but then obviously when we come and talk about it, when artists present the work and talk more in depth about it, that's where it becomes a bit more fuller and a bit more kind of like, you understand more about it. And I think the, that crossover became much more apparent to me that they're, they're, they're initially appreciated. Um, it's a shame- I want to all... see Kansas work now. Yeah. Cancer. Well, you Cancer. No, I, you know what it is? I'm like, Sue, I can't talk. I can't really talk. I'm just talking now. You but if I had to it. present it, um, I think I posted something on Art Lab when it came on some exhibition thing, but I was like, I'm crap at talking in front of people. Oh, you've got to do it. You yeah, you've got to do it. Now. This is the first time I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, mean, really I, didn't bad at it. I can't even talk to my kid's head teacher. <laughs> 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 That's how bad it is. <laughs> well, I don't think I explained any of my paintings in the way that I wanted to explain them. It's just when you're on that spot, on that place. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a problem. I tell you what, I'll, my I'll, stuff I'll, seems I'll really pedestrian. I'll post a performance for you. I'll post a performance on oh, for you. Have you got a recording of it? Yeah, I've got um, a video. Um, sorry, I've got a video thing with the um, spoken word thing, and I'll just put that online. I'll share that. That'd be brilliant. Yeah, please do that. That'd be fantastic. Mm. Sorry, what were you saying, Helen? Uh, my stuff is very pedestrian compared with all these highly spiritual artists here. I don't <laughs> think my work's very that spiritual, really. <laughs> I don't think mine's spiritual. I mean, that's, it's, it's like it's hard to not put yourself in a box that people understand. You know, mm. it's just, I, don't, I just paint what comes through. It's like being a channel, you know. We're all just channels. I agree with that as well. Like you're just grabbing the hold of whatever comes past you, whatever bit of language comes past you, and you're just letting it back yeah. onto a bit of. Because when I talk about language, language everything. Language is how you navigate the world. Yeah. So yeah. I can understand it. So anything that comes through to you, you're just putting it back on a bit of bit of wood. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of wood. We just filtered. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Helen, Helen, I, I think we should give purpose. ourselves a bit more credit than that. I think we should give ourselves a bit more credit than that. I, I, just, I just can't accept that as a, as a given. I'm sorry, I've had enough of it. That's where words fail us. <laughs> but I think That's what people are saying, not for yourself. <laughs> Helen, there's room, for, there's room for everything. And if you ever want to come and give a presentation, that would be fantastic. <laughs> if you look for it, just let me know. Mm. I'll tell you when I'm ready. <laughs> and, and a lot of this, you know, art labs there for kind of works in progress as well, especially mm. when we were meeting in person, it was definitely yeah. kind of like, um, you know, some people perform poetry and performances that they've never done before as like a kind of sketch type of thing and um, uh, people sort of saying this is my like over of work and stuff that is, you know, body of work, but this is the new ideas and getting kind of critical feedback about new ideas as well. So, you know, these presentations don't have to be super polished finished pieces of work that make complete sense I think it's fine to say I have no idea what I'm doing with this this is just where I'm up to so I don't think it has to be like the kind of finished thing to say <laughs> I know all the words <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um has anybody got any more questions for anybody at all? Um, I think Stuart, and just another one for you is that how are you finding it professionally? I think you, you, how are you finding that as an artist? Do you think it's taken away from you as your um, purity of the creativity or is it that you've shaped or molded yourself into sort of fit into the art world? Um, I've navigated, I've struggled with it for you. If I'm honest with you, like 
I struggled with it when I left university, but that was like 10 years ago. And I've really kind of, I have found a niche. I like, I'm doing quite well as an artist. Like, I've, I haven't been able to say that until the last, like, two years. And yeah, I don't make much money out of it, but I, I, I am navigating the art world quite well now. And that's um, came more from talking honestly and taking that humble approach rather than being an authority behind my work and telling people what to think um, right. and putting yourself out to the right places and yeah, put my work out. You know, I was just, I just picking up some notes for myself, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. I, like I fell on my, if, if, if I'm totally, like, I, I like to be honest in these things and if I might sound abrupt or anything else, it's just I'm being honest. Um, I fell on my face when I left Goldsmiths because I thought mm. I was, thought I was the next boy wonder um, mm. and it took it took about a good like 10 years to kind of come to earth and um, mm. say my work what it actually is and if you don't understand that you don't get it that's fair enough that might be my my badness my my, my inability to explain it to you but um, never say you work something that it's not and never try to present yourself as being something that you're not and I know you might not see that from my work but that is true it's very true in it um, yeah. so I would never say it's got it has got a religious aspect to it but I would never say it's about religion it's just got an aspect of it in there does that make any I think, sense? Stuart, I, I think I'd resonate with that and say that like now my artwork's getting out there before at least when I came to Jean Clough it, it was just beginning to come back you know how John's is just beginning and then it's all these different things and now it's like the more I've got value for myself I found like I'm putting myself online and I've got exhibitions and it's because it's me, it's just pure, it's true. But sometimes it's hard for the conscious mind to accept what the subconscious has put out. So you dress it up with like philosophy and psychology and theories like that because it's a huge step to say to yourself, right, I've created this. It's absolutely about the darkness of like mankind and it's come from me because... I think that's too much, but then art's a bit of a cop out for me because I can just say, oh, blag it and blend it, but it is pure. You know, my love and hope painting was pure. It's all pure. It's not bullshit. But you do, when you leave uni, you don't have that. You're so pumped up and your, your, your lecturer's like, you're so brilliant and you're going to go so far, but it's just, it, it, you've got to come back down. Like I took my decade off and you've got to come back down to earth and then live life or whatever. And it comes out, it comes out, all of it comes out again. I went down that, I'm just, again, just being really honest that you ask, but I went down that confessional route and I actually found totally honest. I was doing that for other people. I wasn't doing that for myself. Mm -hmm. My work is about my thinking. It's not about my person. It's about my thinking. It's about my intellect. It's not about my personality. If somebody makes their work about their personality, that is really good. That is that is sound and acceptable, but that's not that's not what my my work comes about because and if you want to know the personal from it, my work comes from the personal not being listened to because I was dyslexic as a child. If you want yeah. to really get into the, the grits and the bones of, of why I'm saying it, it's because I was an intelligent person and was told that I couldn't do stuff because my reading and writing wasn't good enough. But that is not that is that is just what spurs me on. My work is about my thinking, it's not about me as a person. There's no darkness in my work. It is very literal. And I had problems with goldsmiths with this for the same kind of argument. And I was like, no, this is my thinking. And I have made work about it. And I, and that's my writing, which I don't really do that much anymore because I don't need to. Um, but no, and that's why I say I'm not a confessional artist. I do not have anything against confessional art. I love confessional art. I love, I love, I love most art, but that's not what I'm making. I'm not sure what I am, if I'm honest with you, Stuart. I just get told you like Basquiat and you like Frida Kahlo. And I'm like, well, I don't know if I am. I know where I'm from and I yeah. know what my name is, but it's just coming out of my head. And maybe 10 that's years class. down the line, I'll that's figure class. out what it is. That's but, class. That's, that's yeah. class. You don't need any more than that. That is class. Is, that is, that is what, where you should be going on from. Um, Do you think? About, I don't know. I'm not sure. You see, I don't have that certainty in myself about, yet. It's, it's, it's exactly what was... Uh, like Alice was saying before, and we all kind of came with that analogy. It's about what you grab from what goes past you. My grabbings are from my 
probably own inadequacies as my own dyslexia I've been told I can't I can't do right and all the rest of it I'm grabbing these bits of knowledge and these bits of learning that I'm told I was taught from a child that I wouldn't be able to do it I wouldn't be able to write I wouldn't be be doing this or anything else so that is exactly the same as what you're doing it's just for a different reason so that if you're looking for a personality there's always always a personality element in art but it's about I think mine is more of a purge, though. It's, it's cathartic purges. That, sorry, that's what my artwork is. It's, it's cathartic. It's really, it just eases shit off. Maybe it's because we're in my that's, hometown that's, now. It's a form of therapy. <laughs> I, I'm, like, I remember talking to um, an old lecturer, and he was like going, um, and he was saying, like, I, I make artwork because it's just what I do. And I always explained it to him, and like, I've had my dark days. And, um, and I wanted to just stop doing anything. Right? I couldn't just stop doing it because it's what I do. It's just, it's like, I'm more explaining it like I'm, mon I'm a monkey that's just trained to do it now. And it's just what I do. And he was like, no, it's my madness. It is my madness. I put my madness out there. And I, I, I'm not there, but I do understand that artists have it. And it, like a couple of years ago, I was very, very spurred on about making a documentary about like different artists that I know and about what spurs them on and like different practices because we're all very different. Like no artists are, are, are the same and we would, we're making it for very different reasons, but some of them fall from the same places and it goes back to that same psychology. If you want it to go for a deeper meaning, why am I doing it? I'm doing this because of that. Very, very little meaning that somebody taught us I was good at it, good at it as a child. And I know that sounds, that, that is me talking to you on a very deep and understanding and open level as an artist. And I think a lot of artists are there because at one point somebody said, you've done that well. And yeah, definitely, um, Stuart. I just, I progressed in the art world more than I did my normal life, I think. Um, and for me, it's just been a, a, a scapegoat, but it's just, it's been my refuge. It's my sanctuary. People go to church and I should say, I, I go to mosques and stuff, but I don't. I have my studio. artwork and that's my sanctuary. Yeah. 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 It's been nice speaking to you. I have been very, uh, yeah. Yeah, likewise, definitely. Thank you, Alice. This is brilliant. Yeah. Oh, you're very welcome. This is what it's all about. I, I really appreciate yeah. everybody coming and talking. And John as well. John, I liked your work as well. I like yeah, talking about John on a more close <laughs> level because I saw the octopus and I was like, yeah, I like that. The trippy octopus coming into my head. Was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>